two, one. You know, they don't have a donut holder in this, but they have a cup holder. This is something that wasn't standard in the Lamborghini Huracans for a long time, and it's $2,000 for a cup holder. So we are back at Exotic Car Hacks today, and we are looking at the Lamborghini Huracan while I'm having this incredible donut that is probably something I shouldn't have either because I'm probably 20 pounds. You know, actually, Reggie, I went to the gym the other day, and I measured my body fat, and it was 17, okay, I'm lying, it was 21%. But do you know that the 21% body fat actually told me that I've gained seven pounds in the last literally year? I felt so ashamed of myself. Like for one moment, I felt empowered to get on a treadmill. But instead now I'm having a donut while doing a review of this Huracan. Uh, I don't even know what this is. I think it's an Evo. Yeah, it's an Evo all-wheel drive. So actually what's cool about the Evo all-wheel drive, let me show you, is it has this new now this is not an evil all-wheel drive, I'm sorry, it's a rear-wheel drive. It has this new bumper, which is much better looking than the all-wheel drive. And then, the, what confused me for a second, it has the all-wheel drive uh, wheels, whatever. And then it has this new, very cool Performante-like system here in the back. And it's just a really, really cool car. So we're taking a look here at the Exotics Hunter Evo rear-wheel drive convertible that's for sale because we're going to do a Huracan buyer's guide. And I don't think they know that I have a donut in my hand while I'm getting in their car. But one of the things I wanted to point out here in the Huracan, for those of you that have never been in a Huracan, is that I call this the worst piece of shit that came out of Lamborghini in a while because there's plastic everywhere. And one of the things you don't get with the Performante is you don't get any plastic. But here, everything is plastic. And with the Evo, you even get this really terrible screen, which I've complained about in just about every Huracan, STO, Technica, Storato, or anything else, you have this screen. I don't know why they put the screen without a knob for the volume. It's the most annoying thing, and you have to own one to know what it's like. So if you can't afford one, you don't get a say on that. So don't be putting in the comments, please put it up, put it up with two fingers, blah, blah, blah. I'm not a f scientist. When I drive a car, I would like to turn on the volume, turn it down so I can have a donut while I drive and just be able to go through the Starbucks drive-thru while gaining 10 pounds. And if you don't know what that life is like, then it is not for you. This car sports the comfort seats. These are good seats, but there's also a sports seat option, which is fantastic. Uh, and generally speaking, the Huracan is a great platform. Even though the non-Performante, non-STO is filled with plastic everywhere, there are still good opportunities to turn these vents into carbon and to kind of spice it up. At least the Evo is a little bit better than the 610. We're gonna go on the board later and take a look at this. Now, as a short-sized Persian man, who's basically the same size as an Italian man, I fit in these convertibles. If you're over six foot tall, your head's basically over and it's not going to be fun. The cup holder option, $2,000, featured right here. Completely useless for coffee, but great for a bottle or something very short. Uh, good for an espresso or something while you're driving your super cool Huracan. Otherwise, the car is completely outdated now, meaning like the, the platform is over. They're gonna build a new platform. We'll see where it goes. But historically speaking, this is just a really good platform. And it can be either really well executed with a lot of carbon, but then the price goes to the roof, or you buy it used and you can drive it for free, basically hacking it. And you can add carbon from eBay for like 800 bucks, which is okay. But overall speaking, the Huracan platform is now incredibly hackable, which is why we're looking at this car. You can fit in it. You can easily put a chick here. Um, Blowjobs are, are possible, not necessarily mandatory, but they're possible. And the main thing about these cars is that they're incredibly usable. If you've never driven a Huracan, they're very forgiving. You know, originally when I, uh, when I reviewed this car, I said it was the Porsche version of a 911 Turbo 4 Lamborghini because it was very reliable, it was fun, and it was easy to manage. And I still believe that to this day. 10 years later, with all the variations of the Huracan, it is still very much that for Lamborghini. And it's a great car. It's just that there are certain variations where you're not going to get as much of what I consider to be the incredible experience that exotic car ownership can be. And I kind of, uh, I kind of really blame that on people who want to pretend to be rich, who want an entry point that's much cheaper because they don't need the experience, but trust me, you need the experience. Like in Miami, you would be considered poor driving this, but it's still pretty cool. I mean, generally as a car, 
It's a pretty cool car, but don't expect to basically impress your favorite Instagram ho by having one of these. But anyhow, let's go to the board while I finish this donut. We're gonna go on the board and see the numbers because numbers matter and there's no need to do a review. You can Google my last 10 reviews. It shouldn't be that hard uh, on the Huracan itself, but let's go to the board and see how hackable the numbers are on this Huracan. And I'm gonna finish this because it's melting all over my hand. I'll catch you guys shortly. All right guys, so we've taken a look at the Huracan and now we're going to look at the numbers because they have to ultimately make sense, right? The Huracan is probably one of the most popular ever sold Lamborghini on earth. So if it's that popular, then a lot of people like it. Now there are a lot of trims for this car. Now you have the regular LP610, you have the LP580-2, which is basically the rear wheel drive. Then you have the Evo, then you have the Evo rear wheel drive. In there, you have a Performante, and it keeps going. Then you have an STO race car, you have a Technica. I mean, you know, it's getting to a lot of different types. Then you have a Storado, I don't even know how to spell that. So, you know, you have all of these makes that are literally the same car. Like the only difference here is you have all wheel drive, rear wheel drive. All wheel drive with rear wheel steering and new bump, front and rear bumper. Uh, same exact thing in rear wheel drive. Then you have the Perf, which was, you know, the Nürburgring record setter, fantastic car, one of, probably one of the best variants of the Performante, uh, of the Huracan. Then you have the STO, which is ultimately the race car version of the Performante. Then you have the Technica, which is kind of like the new version of the Performante with the all-wheel steering. And then you have the Storado, which is the rally car. I mean, this is just insane. I don't think we've ever seen someone milk a platform as much as Lamborghini has with this and the Aventador series. I mean, you had the same thing with the Aventadors, which I thought was phenomenal for them. I mean, listen, Lamborghini is a great brand. They make great product. And so more power to them for being able to extract so much money out of the same platform. And I think that's why they're so popular and so, uh, so well funded now because they were able to figure this out better than anybody else. I mean, this is the same as saying if there were 20 different variations of F430 or 458 Italian, there just isn't. And I think this is something that Lamborghini is, is gonna hurt Lamborghini in the long term, but in the short term, I'm sure they're making a ton of money and enjoying it. But the focus today that we're gonna take a look at is looking at the hackability of the Huracan. And so unfortunately, some of these models yet have not hit what we consider to be a very hackable model. So the Storado just came out, so we're not gonna look at that because it's not old enough and doesn't have enough data. Uh, but you remember with anything new, you can always buy it and drive it free for the first few months just because it's brand new and everybody wants it if you can avoid the taxes. The Technica, also too new to really be talking about. STO, we've seen uh, not enough data and not enough time again to give us anything. Perf is a good one. We can kind of examine slightly. And then the Evo rear wheel drive, we're not gonna look at specifically because these cars were sold 30, 50K over sticker and just don't do very well. Now, the main focus is I'm gonna focus on the most hackable variations of the car, which in my opinion, uh, as someone who's driven and owns, owned, I've owned every one of these cars, but someone who has had experience buying and selling these exact specific models, I'm gonna focus on the three most hackable variations, which are the 610, we're gonna ignore the 580-2, the Evo and the Perf, which I think are the most hackable variations of the car. So there's a few things you have to know, basically, in, in order to follow the 610 data. The 610 was the first one that came out in 2015. It is a little bit dated. Uh, we just took a look at one. It's a little bit dated because a lot of the original review I had with the car was it was a plastic piece of shit. I don't know if you remember that video, but it was a very popular video on YouTube where I was probably the only one that criticized Lamborghini for building the biggest piece of shit plastic car. And I did say two things. I said the transmission's phenomenal for a Lamborghini. And I said the drivetrain, like the, the power of the car, the engine, the platform is phenomenal. But the aesthetics were just not there. It was just not exciting. So then they came out with an Evo model, uh, which is a lot more refined, a lot more exciting. And before that, they had the Performante version. Now, what was actually interesting, if you remember the reviews, I said that the Performante, even though it literally looks like a 610 with just a wing uh, and you know a few enhancements on the outside, but the interior is refined. 
I called one of the best cars to ever grace the earth. So this was a very interesting thing for me because I just called this one of the biggest pieces of shit in the country. And then I called this, which was slightly the same on the surface as one of the best cars that, that was ever made. So the argument, people got confused. They were like, I don't understand how adding an Alcantara dashboard, a set of wheels and a wing and a new front bumper now makes the worst car into the best car. And it wasn't about that. It was that the Performante, just like the Performante SUV of the Earth, it is on the surface and on the numbers, like on paper, nothing groundbreaking. But the combination of the ALA system, the design, the craftsmanship and everything, it just worked so well. Like, and, and I think the exotics are about the experience of driving. And this car nailed all aspects of the experience. This car just nailed the, the fistral experience of noise and power. And it just felt like there was so much missing. I felt like this about a lot of cars, like the 488 to the 488 Pista. I still think the Pista is a piece of shit. So like, again, a lot of these cars, manufacturers try these kind of combinations and it doesn't work. But on the value scale, it's very important to look at these three and kind of understand a few things. In 2019, uh, which was when uh, Huracans became hackable, the 2015s, because we're in the four year range, the values went as low as 185 for the lowest clean wholesale variant. And the majority of the cars were basically at their highest point around 230K. Now, this meant that they were slightly about 10% below sticker in, in very good variations. And then in wholesale with 15, 20,000 miles, we're trending at 185. Post COVID, meaning once the data started going up and started moving up and then settling down, we now have clean variations of the LP610, right about 205K. That is the number. That is the ultimate number where basically the car becomes the most hackable. But one thing I wanna point you out to is the range really hasn't changed much. We're still dealing with a range right here between 205 to 230K and a very slight increase of roughly 10% over what it was back in 2019. I'm gonna mark that here uh, to 2020 and up. So one of the things I can tell you today, we've seen values go up, but values have been holding very, very steady between 205 and 230. The reason, again, this becomes hackable, remember what we always talk about, we're talking about 10% margin of error. And when the 10% margin of error is the entire range, it's very easy to hack. So you're talking about here, 230K minus 23K, that gives you roughly 207K. So right there, 205, 230, very, very good range. I mean, it, you have to look at this car basically and say, if you bought a car at 215, your exposure rate here is only like $10,000 to drive a quarter million dollar Lamborghini. Now, given that if you're driving this in Miami or LA, you're probably a peasant. Uh, if you're driving this in uh, Kansas, you're probably the richest guy they've ever seen. So there is a dynamic to older Huracans are a little bit, uh, you know, kind of accustomed to by people. So they're not necessarily that exciting. Now, a little bit riskier of a car, however, is the Evo. Now the Evo, remember it came out much later. So it didn't really have much of the 2019 data pool and it had a higher MSRP. So if we're looking at the Evo itself, we're looking at slightly different values, especially with the all wheel drive because the dollar was higher for the car. Most cars were specced around 300K. And so when cars were getting used, you were seeing values right around uh, 275, 280, et cetera. But today, so those values have changed a little bit as well. You can find some of the cleaner, uh, lower end cars around 250, and then you'll see them go all the way up to 305. But if you take a look at that number here, you're talking about, uh, about a 20% uh, scale. So the risk becomes much, much higher here. Now it is still possible to hack an Evo uh, all wheel drive. You'd have to be somewhere at the most around the 260 to 270 K range for a very well loaded car. So it's going to be much harder. So that's one of the reasons why I, I will tell you that the majority of the hack situation is going to happen here or in the perf, which is also a first generation Huracan. So the Evo was part of the second generation and then the STO, et cetera, part of the third. So this, this area right here is the third generation. These two are second and these two plus this one right here are part of the first. So when we're looking at the perf, it's a lot more stable than the Evo. So during their highest point, uh, the, the perfs were basically uh, between 330 to 350 K MSRP. And they, they, during their lowest point in 2019, cause these cars came out in 2018, right past COVID, these cars were being sold uh, for about 20% off of MSRP. So if you had a 350 K car, you were able to buy that car for around 280 K or so uh, at its lowest point. 
And again, in its highest point, you were able to buy it somewhere around 360K, which was around sticker for spiders, et cetera. So this gap, again, much larger. But today, things have changed a lot because since COVID, this number did go up and it has now settled back down. So the majority of these cars are now found between 325K being a very healthy, uh, good dollar to pay for the car for a premium version car, all the way down to 280K for a very base model. So this is important to note here because again, we're taking a look here at about a 12% margin uh, for the car. But I will mention something, very few cars in the 280s. So the majority of the gap here between the cars is between 300 to 300. 25. So we're talking about a less than 10% if you're looking at the majority of the data, but it doesn't mean that some cars are not out there in the 280s if you're looking hard enough. I would argue that a very clean, good option, good spec car with fair mileage between eight to 10,000 should be currently going around 300K if it's clean and around 280K if it's wholesale, has the wrong race seats, etc. One of the big things that you'll get in the first and second generation is some cars were fitted with the race seat. Now the race seat is not to be confused with the sports seat. The race seat was a fixed carbon fiber seat that was like you were sitting on a pile of rock and getting literally mutilated on your asshole by, well, let's not go there anyways. So you're sitting on a pile of rock. Why are you laughing, Richie? I'm always destroying my videos. Anyways, you were sitting on a pile of rock, so you don't want those seats. They were also available in the Aventador. They are the death seat and what I call about a 10% loss in value because nobody wants to sit on that seat, especially when they test drive it. Very different than the third generation during the STO Technica and Serato, where they introduced, even with the Evo rear wheel drive, a sports seat which is a carbon fiber seat that's adjustable, incredibly comfortable and very desirable and will actually bring more money because the car not only looks great, but it's very similar to a Ferrari seat that is very comfortable. So a great change for Lamborghini once they went away from that race seat, but there are perfs out there with that race seat, which makes them worth a lot less. So if you're going to be buying an LP610 or a Performante, try to stay around that for LP610s, there's gonna be more variations. Try to stay around the 15, 20,000 mile range for the best hackability and for the perf. Try to stay under 10,000 miles. And look at these values as kind of an indicator of how easily these gaps are and how little you could lose driving one of these cars. Because again, this is not a loss, it's a risk exposure. And the risk exposure is very minimal because we have now seen that after three years, the values have stayed the same. So it's a very good sign that you don't even have to hack this for just 12 months. You could hack this for 24, 36 months and literally see the value staying the same, which would lower your cost of ownership significantly and literally get you to a place where you could drive a performance for less than like $400 a month, which is insanity. So anyways, I hope you enjoy stuff like this. If you wanna see more of this, leave me a comment. Let me know which car you want me to talk about next. And of course, don't forget our Black Friday and July sale is live now which means you can access exotic car hacks and all data for all cars like this, again, for over 80% off in our community with over 20,000 plus people hacking cars. So we'd love to have you join us. And again, don't forget to like, subscribe, turn on notification so I don't have to go become a stripper in the evenings. Anyways, I will talk to you next time. And uh, again, thanks for watching Exotic Car Hacks. My name is Pejman Gadimi, and I teach people how to drive exotics for free. Let's look here at how this Huracan can cost as little as 300 a month.